Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. Lately, here on the channel, we've been playing with a lot of urethane. It's a great material, it's used to make things we love, like wheels and bushings for skateboards and longboards. And one of the advantages is, you can get it to be all kinds of fun colors, but on its own, it's pretty dull. Kind of a clear brown yellow thing. Shout out to the OG Cadillac wheels, they made this look good. So far, in my castings for color, I've been using pigments that are specifically made to dye urethane, and they've been working great. But they're a little pricey, and they can be kind of hard to come by, so I got to wondering, mm, how else might I be able to color my urethane? And I've rounded up some potential candidates, so grab your lab coats, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to do... Science! How we doing up in here? We got them proper mad scientist vibes? Let's test some different colorants from different mediums and see what you can use to dye your urethane. We're gonna be testing six different materials that I happen to have around the shop from a variety of different projects. I tried to pick ones that people might already have around if they're doing board building or even if they're just doing some crafts or fine arts. So here are your candidates. Speedball screen printing ink for cloth. Rit liquid fabric dye. Procyon powdered fabric dye. Perlex, pearlescent pigment, that's also a powder. Alcohol ink, and acrylic paint. And on the end here, we have the tried and tested urethane pigment. This one works, and we know it. For this experiment, I'll be using the same urethane that I've been using in all my tests so far. It's specialty resins, flex at 80. It's mixed one to one, part A to B, so I measured and marked out the lines for seven batches. Then I labeled each of the cups for the dyes I'd be testing. I poured out the part B for each of the batches, and then it was time to add my colorants. When mixing any kind of additive to a resin where you need it to maintain its physical properties, you want the additive to make up less than about 5% of the total final volume, so I did my best to keep my amounts small. And they all went fairly smoothly with the exception of the powdered fabric dye, which clumped up like crazy and didn't want to integrate with the urethane until I mixed it pretty violently. Now that the colorants are added, it's time to mix our urethane. The urethane I'm working with has a four minute pot life, but it really starts to kick and tack up around two minutes, so I had to work quickly. I went down the line and added the part A to each of the batches and got in as much stirring as I could before things started to gel up. I ended up having to abandon one of the seven samples because they wouldn't all fit in the pressure pot. The good news is that sample was the urethane dye, which I've been using extensively, and I already have a sample of what it looks like cast under pressure. This one works time and time again, so I'm not too bummed that I didn't get another chance to test it. I waited a couple hours for the urethane to cure, depressurized the pot, and extracted our samples. Right away, I noticed there was something going on with a liquid fabric dye, which is great. That means this is not gonna be boring. Let's get into the results. First, I gave each sample a quick prod to see if any of the resin was still tacky. Cure inhibition was the issue I was most worried about, and it looks like in each case, the resin did set up, which is great. I'll tell you guys now, each one of these samples has a little bit of uncured resin on the sides and the bottom. That is not a result of the colorants. Normally, when you're mixing a two-part chemical like an epoxy or a resin, you want to scrape the sides of the cup, you want to make sure that you're getting all the parts up off of the bottom, and you want to pour it into something else. That's because the sides and bottom of the cup tend to get a thin film of either part A or part B, and it's really hard to get that to integrate and mix properly, so it'll never really cure right. And that's especially true if you're mixing seven batches, two-handed, in under two minutes, and that's exactly what happened here. So, the sticky edges that you're gonna see are a result of bad mixing, not a result of any of the different colorants that we added to the urethane. Great. With that out of the way, let's take a closer look at how the samples came out. First up, screen printing ink. This sample seemed to set up fairly well, but it had this strange crack running around the edge. This was the first batch that was mixed, and it sat out in the air the longest before it went into the pot. So I don't know if that crack is from the ink or from some atmospheric pressure thing, so our results are inconclusive. Next up, we're looking at what is easily the most interesting outcome of this experiment, the liquid fabric dye. A urethane cure is an exothermic reaction, which means it gives off heat, but it's usually just warm to the touch. This one got real hot, hot enough to melt and deform the bottom of the cup. And if we look at the puck, it is full of bubbles and the bottom is all blistered. It's puffed up to about twice its normal size, and this is really more of a foam rubber than a solid chunk of urethane at this point. 
So results, failure. Do not use RIT dye to color your urethane. Next. Next up, we have our powdered fabric dye and perhaps it will fare better than its liquid counterpart. This puck looks like it cured fairly well, but the color never really integrated. If you look closely, it's more speckled and spotted than dyed. And it has that same crack going all the way around. And though the bottom was smooth when I first pulled it out, later on it also developed some of that blistering that we saw in the liquid dye. So results of this one? Failure. Even if it didn't have the cracks and the blistering, you really wouldn't want to use this to color your urethane because the powder clumps up and it, it just looks bad. Okay, onward. Next up, we've got this pearlescent powder. And I'll admit, I have high hopes for this one because I've seen how it works in resin castings. And if we can get anything close to that, we should be able to make some really, really cool stuff. And wow, that looks fantastic. The depth of the shine is almost opalescent. And fortunately, the cure went well. The puck is solid and the edges are clean. So the results for this one? Success. We got one. All right, let's keep it up. Next up, we're looking at the alcohol ink. For some reason, I was worried that even if the sample cured properly, that it would be dyeing everything it touched blue. I guess I was thinking that the ink might bleed out or something. I'm happy to report that not only did the resin set correctly, the ink doesn't seem to be bleeding at all. The only oddity with this one is the color, and I think we can explain that. Alcohol ink is very transparent, and as I mentioned earlier, the urethane's natural color is this brownish yellow. If you were going to mix yellow, brown, and blue together, you'd probably get something that looks exactly like this. So results? A qualified success. You can use alcohol ink to color urethane, but you have to be mindful of how the color of the ink and the urethane will blend. And lastly, we have the acrylic paint. There were other pigments that I personally wanted to work more than this one, but I was probably most interested in the outcome of this particular test because of how ubiquitous and available acrylics are. If you don't already have some in your house, you can probably get some very easily. So how'd it turn out? Great, a solid cure, a really nice translucent color. This is probably the best outcome of the batch. Results? Success! So here are the samples. Three successes, two failures, and one not so sure. But we're not done. Listen, we're not doing hard science here. I'm not about to go write a thesis based on this experiment or anything. But it would be a complete abandonment of anything representing scientific principles if I dismissed that uncured resin on the sides of the pucks with my best guess. We don't guess here, we test. So I broke out my squish mold from the previous video and got mixing. The pearlescent pigment and the alcohol ink both seemed like they work. If so, I should be able to mix them and get a properly cured and awesome looking bushing. Urethane in the mold, mold in the pot, and after a two hour cure time, yes, the resin's set up, the sides are cured, there's nothing sticky, and look at that. That looks freaking fantastic, like some kind of galaxy or something. Awesome. Confirmed. Alcohol ink and powdered pigments both work with urethane. But hang on a second, we're still not done. I wanted to be double sure about the acrylic paint and I wanted to give the screen printing ink another chance because I think it might have been my fault that the puck cracked and I wanted to be sure. So for this test, I decided to make a two color bushing. This way I could see how each material cured individually. I mixed up my two batches. Poured. Pressurized. Cured. And that's looking pretty good. And again, no sticky uncured resin. So that really was just a mixing and pouring issue. And the bushing looks pretty dang good. But check this out. This is the leftover urethane from the screen printing ink. It's even foamier than the liquid fabric dye was. It feels like a Nerf ball. It's pretty cool actually, but it's nowhere near what we're trying to achieve. But the bushing looks good. So maybe the time in the pressure pot made it a moot point. At least, that's what I thought until I woke up this morning. The side of the bushing that was colored with the screen printing ink was all soft and bulgy. And eventually it blew out, popped like a tire. It didn't explode or anything. There were just pockets of air that built up inside of it and eventually they split the bushing. So there's our conclusion for screen printing ink, at least the kind you'd use to make like t-shirts. It's not a good idea to use it to dye your urethane. The acrylic side of that bushing came out great. That one gets a pass from me. It cured up nice and solid. It's feeling the right amount of bouncy. I think that one's ready to rock and roll. And after that test, I'm starting to notice an interesting trend. All the colorants that we tested that failed, failed in the same way. They foamed and blistered or pressure built up inside of the puck and split it. And another interesting coincidence, they all relate to working with fabric. We've got a fabric screen printing ink and a dry and wet fabric dye. So maybe there's some useful chemical for bonding pigments to cloth that acts as sort of a foaming agent in urethane. Interesting, very 
very interesting. But we did have some success with some of our dyes and pigments and we got some nice solid cures. Now I don't have the right equipment to test and see if the rubber is behaving the same way that it would if we were using chemicals that were specifically made to do this. So I can't speak directly to how any of these materials might affect the qualities of the urethane. And I'm also learning that it's really, really difficult to mix the A and B parts of these chemicals in small batches. Some set up perfectly and work great, some wind up kind of squishy. And I'm not entirely sure why, but I think getting that perfect ratio of A to B is a big part of the puzzle. I've still got a lot to learn about this material and how to best get it to do what I want. Fun! Learning is fun. It's how we get good at stuff. And now that I'm armed with this new knowledge, I have a whole new set of options when I go to color my urethane. Whole bunch of different new ways to get it looking mm, mm, so good. So I hope you enjoyed coming along with me on this exploration. We're learning, and in learning, we're progressing and stepping up our game. If you've got questions or ideas, leave them in the comments down below so that we can discuss, because that's what good scientists do. Peer review! And if you like this video, why not subscribe? Stick around to see how I apply this new knowledge to make all kinds of awesome DIY board sports stuff. And that's going to be it for this one. Thanks as always for coming along, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Science! Peer review!